Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. Welcome to the Homeschool Astronomy Challenge series. This video marks a bit of a transition in the series. Up to this point, none of the challenges required any sort of optical assistance. You just needed your eyes. But in the upcoming episodes, either a small telescope or binoculars will be required. In this video, we're going to learn how to use a beginner telescope. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use binoculars to observe things in space. This is Learn to Stargaze. All right, before we get started, I just need to define beginner telescope because I think it means something different to a lot of people. Also note that I am not endorsing, nor do I mean to criticize any particular telescope brand. Every telescope has a purpose, and I go into detail on the subject on pages six and seven of the 50 things to see with the telescope activity workbook. Also, this is not a video on which telescope to buy. That is an extremely complex topic, and I've made several videos on it before, and I will make more in the future, so stay tuned to learn to stargaze. So to be clear, a beginner telescope should either look like this refractor, this Dobsonian, or this Newtonian. Here are three simple tests that you can do to determine if your telescope was designed to look at things in space. One, is it easy to use when pointed straight up? Two, does the telescope effortlessly move left and right and up and down? And three, does it stay exactly where you put it when you let go? The telescope should stay on target and the image should not bounce around. Let me be clear, if your telescope fails any one of these tests, it is not designed for space, or it is not a beginner telescope. If the mount on your telescope looks like this, then it is equatorially mounted, and I do not consider that a beginner telescope because you can't easily push it left or right or up or down. I'll cover equatorially mounted telescopes in a future video. Also, look carefully at how the telescope is mounted. This is a camera tripod, not a telescope mount. Telescopes mounted on camera tripods are extremely difficult to point to things in space. Also look at the diagonal. This is a 45 degree diagonal designed for looking at things on Earth, not in space. If you want to use a telescope like this for looking at things in space, you'll want to replace the 45 degree diagonal with a 90 degree diagonal like this. Assuming you followed the manual and assembled your telescope, you've set the scope up outside with a clear view of the sky and you're ready to start observing, you've probably realized that you can't just look in the eyepiece and expect to see anything. Speaking of eyepieces, if your telescope came with more than one, use the one with the larger focal length. The focal length should be listed on the side. Hopefully you're using one between 20 and 30 millimeters, any less, and the magnification it provides might be too much for the telescope to handle. The most important part of setting up a telescope for observing is getting the telescope in focus and making sure the telescope and the finder are pointed at exactly the same spot. Now both focusing and aligning the finder scope can be done at the same time. If you're using a red dot finder like this one, make sure it's turned on by turning this knob. You can adjust the brightness with the same knob. So here's what I like to do. Look around for a bright star in the sky point the telescope and try to center it in the finder. Once you've centered the finder on a bright star, move to the eyepiece and take a look. Chances are there's no sign of the star. And there's two reasons for this. First, the telescope is so out of focus you can't see anything. And second, the telescope and the finder are pointed in different directions. This is a very common problem. The first thing we're gonna do is try to focus the telescope. So while looking into the eyepiece, we're gonna turn the focusing knob in and out until the stars become pinpoints of light. Now, if you see a giant splotch or a donut, that's a bright star just really out of focus. So you're gonna turn the knob until that bright donut or big splotch is as small as you can make it and you should be able to focus it into a point. After the telescope's in focus, we're gonna go back to the finder scope and put it back centered on that bright star. Now we're gonna go back to the eyepiece and look for that star. So we may need to go up and down and left and right. Once you've centered the star in the eyepiece exactly, move back to the finder scope and use the adjustment knobs to center the star in the finder. 
you may need to go back and forth between the telescope and the finder making small adjustments until the finder scope and the telescope are centered on exactly the same star. It's important to check the alignment of the finder every time you use your telescope. Every time you switch eyepieces, you'll need to refocus. And if you're using the telescope with other people, they may need to refocus the telescope to their eyes unique prescription. Your telescope may have come with a device called a Barlow. These are designed to zoom in on planets by doubling or tripling the magnification. You use this by placing it between the telescope and the eyepiece, like that. But use a Barlow sparingly. Barlows make a non-computerized telescope incredibly difficult to use. After you add the Barlow, you need to remember to refocus the telescope. If you're having trouble with any of these steps, you might want to try to focus and align your telescope during the day using a distant landmark or a street lamp as a reference. Note that you'll need to adjust the focus again once you move to objects in space. And remember, do not point your telescope anywhere near the sun. If you're following along in the 50 things to see with the telescope activity workbook, there are detailed instructions on focusing and aligning several types of finders on page nine. Detailed instructions on how to set up and use various types of telescopes are found on pages 10 and 11. So after your telescope is in focus and the finder scope and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same place, it's time to find objects in the night sky. So here's how you do that. Step one, you need to know exactly where to look before you even touch the telescope. Locate the object on a star map like those found in the book 50 Things to See with a Telescope or using astronomy software like Stellarium. If it's a planet or the moon, you can find these objects without a telescope, but the software will help you identify which planet is which. Step two, using the finder, guide the telescope to the exact position you identified in step one. If you're using a finder scope, you should be able to resolve your target in the finder scope itself. If you're using a red dot finder or something similar, confirm that the finder is centered exactly on the right spot in the sky. Step three, if you did steps one and two correctly, you should be able to find the object in your eyepiece. If you can't find it, it's possible you need to repeat the focusing and alignment process from the previous section. It's also possible the target you chose was outside the capabilities of your telescope given the current seeing conditions. Even if you're using a computerized telescope, the same focus and alignment steps apply. Beginner computerized telescopes often have a tonight's best feature, but note that the software in the telescope often overestimates what you'll realistically be able to see. And when you're using a telescope, you don't touch it at all. That will shake the image. And if kids are using the telescope, it may help to use a stool and watch where they put their hands. As an adult, sometimes it helps to observe from a chair. This also helps with not touching the telescope and being comfortable as you observe. Well, I hope you found this beginner telescope crash course helpful. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.